They say every motorcycle rider has a road. It's a road they claim after they've ridden it many times. They develop a sort of bond with it as they've traveled over it many times over the years. Usually the road chooses its rider just as much as the rider chooses the road. You can learn a lot about a rider by knowing what road they have chosen. Where they're from, what type of scenery they enjoy, what type of riding they enjoy doing. When a rider is bonded with the road, it will always represent what that person loves about motorcycling, and it will always be the road upon which all other rides will be judged against. For me, this road is the Pacific Coast Highway. Starting off on a new adventure here. So just got done with a full day of work. Now we're headed up to Santa Cruz, California. We just want to blaze up there real quick because really the main destination is, well, we're gonna go up to San Francisco, the Redwoods around there. And then we're gonna come down to Big Sur on Sunday. And then on Monday from Big Sur, all the way down Highway 1, back into Southern California. So we got rain in the forecast. So Andrew and I switched weapons at the last second. So Andrew and I are both gearing up on the Pan Americas because we just feel like they're going to deal with the rain a little bit better. And you know what? The Pan Americas need a little bit of love every once in a while as well. So after Andrew's been customizing his Road King, he doesn't get the Pan America anymore love. Yeah, so it's time to shake the cobwebs off of it. And put that 150 horsepower to work. We got Mickey on the trip here. What's a up guys? A fan favorite quickly rose to stardom on the North Rim video. Is that right? So he'll be rocking the Road Glide Limited here. Shout out to my buddy Rocco for letting me borrow a bike. Brandon rocking the Road King. I'm strictly here to talk handlebars and nothing else. Excited. I'm all antsy. Had a lot of energy drinks and I got no where to put the energy yet. I'm just like running in motion right now. I'm just I'm ecstatic. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting with the rain, but it's gonna be fun. It's like sunny the entire time, like on both sides of Sunday. And on Sunday, it's like raining like 90%. Is it like 90% still? Uh, to your calculations, mine was like 60, 40. I like my odds better. Yeah. It's gonna be an adventure. We all got ABS though, so yeah. this should be fine. Fine. Nick was rocking the Pan America as well. Dude, Nick got a special haircut for the trip too. Yeah. He took way too long pulling his hair into his helmet and so he shaved his head. Between my, my gear obsession and my hair and everything, it was just too much. So I had to chop off the hair so I could keep the gear, you know, and not still uh, delay everyone at every traffic stop. Backstory, we give Nick a lot of crap for yeah, every piece of gear he has to put on every time we stop it's you know the helmet the gloves this or that and so one last thing he has to do to prep before we actually get to ride is is a good thing all right well, we're gonna gas up and head out we should hit santa cruz probably around one in the morning i don't know maybe if we go fast it'll be like 12 o'clock hopefully we can still check in we'll see but tomorrow hopefully uh we'll have some fun in the rain probably listened to hundreds of riders over my lifetime give me their best advice on how to plan a road trip. I can say without fail, every single one of them has said, start early. Get up when the sun gets up and start your ride early. But because of the unique circumstances with all the guys I ride with, us all being co-workers and riding together, and wanting to pack everything into one weekend, we usually find ourselves leaving as the sun is setting. This trip would be no different. We had about 360 miles to cover on our way up to Santa Cruz. We had originally planned to go up to the Golden Gate Bridge, then go south of San Francisco and ride around the Redwoods. 
Little did we know, the next day, our plans would be changing a little bit. And that's okay. Looking back on the trip, we got a little bit more adventure than we had bargained for. Going with the flow and improvising is sometimes something we have to do. As you're headed north on the 5 and leaving San Fernando Valley, you go over a mountain pass called the Grapevine. I've been over this pass many times, usually in traffic, and it's really nothing to write home about. But when you're doing it after rush hour and in the sunset, it's actually not a bad road to take. Directions this evening would be pretty straightforward. Jump on the 10 West, head up to the 605 North, then take the 210 West to the 134, and then we'd be jumping on the 5 North, taking the 5 North, blazing all the way up to the 152, taking the 152 West to Pacific Coast Highway 1, and then taking a quick jaunt into Santa Cruz. Most of the ride would be in the pitch black, so we'd be making good use of our Daymaker headlamps. Nick has the auxiliary lights on his Pan America, which are pretty dang bright and lit up the road very nicely. here about 111 miles in it's gonna be a late night tonight so we gotta probably still have a little 180 miles to go or so we're gonna get up to Kettleman which is about 83 miles away from us now we're just north of where the 99 and the 5 meet I don't even know where we're at right now but yeah we got about an hour ride to in and out grab a burger and then head the rest of the way into Santa Cruz How's the Road Guard Limited so far, Mickey? Oh, it's great, man. It's really comfy. Really, really comfy. I uh, I miss having a full dresser, having the storage space, and my, my helmet right here in the tour pack. It's a beautiful thing, too. The convenience. Yeah. <laughs> How was it down there, Mickey? Is the rain bad, or what's going on? All right, so we're just waking up here in lovely Santa Cruz. It is raining today. We decided to pick the only two days in September that it was raining up here because, you know what, riding in the sunshine is just too easy. So we decided to put the rain mode on our bikes to the test. We're at the Solaris Hotel, pretty close to like the boardwalk in Santa Cruz. Kind of a nice place. We got here at like two in the morning last night, so I didn't really get to a chance to check out the facility here. We're gonna go down right now, check out the bikes. Oh, and the storm is moving south right now. So we wanted to make sure that we followed the storm down to Big Sur. So we're traveling down south. So we stay with the rain clouds. We don't want to lose them. So right now, actually, we're gonna, probably going to head up to... Uh, we might do Golden Gate Bridge. I don't know. There's this place called Alice's uh, Cafe or Alice's Diner or something like that. A lot of the food there is named after motorcycles. We heard it's like a really good like biker spot. Yeah, the route that we're taking today was recommended to us by our buddy Dave Shanklin. Shout out to Dave, by the way. 
Uh, he put together a YouTube video showing us exactly the route to take around here in Santa Cruz. Make a right here onto Alpine Road. Yeah, that's what it's gonna look like in there, it's ridiculous. Alpine Road will bring you back up the skyline. If you just stay on Alpine and ride it, it'll blow your brains out. It's really super good. He lives here in Santa Cruz, so he's a, uh, He's the local expert here, but he said, oh, by the way, don't do any of these roads when it's raining because it's like super sketchy and some of them are just a single lane for both uh, directions of traffic. So um, we might just do it anyways because, uh, well, a few of us are on the Pan Americas. Uh, again, that's why we chose the Pan Americas because we wanted to check out the rain mode. And uh, so we're gonna put it to the test, put the traction control to the test, and uh, put our rain gear to the test as well. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, guys. So there's nothing better than starting the morning to bikes that are soaking wet. Seats are completely soaked. It's, it's pouring right now. And uh, now we're gonna jump out and, and go for a nice ride. Once again, you know, riding in the sunshine, it gets to be kind of too easy and too boring sometimes. So uh, once in a while you gotta throw in a little bit of rain just to kind of, you know, spice things up a little bit. Uh, here we got mix. Pan America. Oh, he's got the little rain bag on his tank bag. Look at that guy. He's prepared. Mickey's Road Glide Ultra here. Surprisingly enough, a lot of the hotels here in Santa Cruz this weekend were completely booked up. I'm not sure why. It's terrible weather. No one would want to go to the beach or anything today. School's back in session, so I don't think there's any like summer vacationers here right now. So it's just kind of the idiots that are here right now. This place was not too bad. It's one of those hotels that was probably really good like 50 years ago, but now it's just kind of old and dated, but it's still all right. So we're down here at the pool level. The rest of the guys are down here on floor one. We were on floor three last night. Hey, oh, there he is. Come on in. All geared out there. Oh, right dude, there, I think that was Nick, you know? Dang. Go check him out. All right. Hey! hey. hey. Getting all geared up, huh? Oh, dude. Yeah, this is my rain gear here. So I don't think it's going to perform well. You don't think it's going to perform well? My current rain gear setup right here. Is it genuine Harley Davidson gear? No. Well, that's it's not going to perform. Okay, well, you're definitely going to get wet then. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. You guys have three beds and you paid less than I did, and you got the floor level. Yeah, but you got like, a coffee bed. I don't care about balcony. Was it bad last night? Uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it, it was only bad for about 10 minutes and then Brandon woke himself up. He was snoring, snoring so bad. He didn't really wake himself up, but like it sounded like he was gonna die. Like he was fighting for his life over there. And like sleep apnea Yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, like it was, like, it, it, he started vocalizing stuff. It wasn't just like pure, like uh, just snoring. It was like actual vocalizing. It was like, oh, uh, 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 like he was over there fighting. I almost had to go wake him up because I, I was worried about him. More of a suggestion. Thing about Mickey, he's above the law. Yeah. He Wait. has long hair. Sorry guys. Kids don't smoke. It's bad for you. I want to show you guys why it's important to always have all your recall work done on your bike. Not don't ignore those recall bulletins. Yesterday when Andrew got here, he was putting his bike up on the center stand. He oh what's what happened here? I broke the handle into two pieces. Yeah. Apparently Harley didn't design this handle to be robust and to take the weight of a fully loaded bike to pull up on a kickstand and it broke hard. It made a big noise too. And this yeah. is thick plastic. Or that broke that. The way to look at it is they didn't build it to handle the strength of Andrew. Oh, yeah. that's true. I like that better. That's true. Those guns. Dude. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so the rain is getting heavier now, so we're thinking about now's a good time to leave. Oh, whoa, whoa. You gotta watch out for those influencers, you know? Get in people's way. Influencers in the wild, they get in people's way.
I'd like to say that we followed our buddy Dave's route that he mapped out for us, but that would be a lie. Trying to lead and navigate a group of five riders in the rain isn't the easiest thing in the world, especially in a place that you've never been before. And on top of that, one of the key roads that we needed to go on was closed. So at that point, we all pulled over to the side of the road in the rain, and I remapped out our route for that day. It was right about that time where I started to have some negative thoughts. And the conclusion I came to is really there's two ways you can ride in the rain. You can either pout and complain about it, which I did a little bit of that day, or the second way you can ride in the rain, which is the way I recommend, is you can just embrace it, embrace the adventure, and just enjoy mother nature in the rain. Whichever way you choose, there's one thing I do know, is that it pays off to be prepared. The five of us all knew that it was gonna rain, so we all had some form or fashion of rain gear. I was wearing the full Passage ADV suit that Harley Davidson offers, which was actually very good. I was very impressed with it. Andrew was wearing the Passage jacket, which I think worked out really well for him. However, he decided that, you know, he really didn't need the pants this trip, so he wore jeans and he regretted it instantly. Nick was, of course, all geared out with his combination of Revit gear, the Grit jacket by Harley Davidson, and then I think he had some form of Revit pants. Mickey decided to just Amazon it, and last minute he grabbed some Amazon rain gear. And then I believe Brandon had some Harley Davidson proper rain gear that just goes on over your clothes. The long and short of it, we all got a little bit wet, but it could have been a heck of a lot worse if we weren't prepared at all. Uh, all right, we're at Big Basin Park right now, just enjoying ourselves. The rain is horrible. We got the redwoods all around. Rain is coming down heavy. Oh yeah. Exhaust is smoking. Great. Brace the sun. This is an adventure. This is exactly why we took the Pan Americas. Well, some of us took the Pan Americas. Mickey, did the rainbow keep Mickey from smoking? No, man. This is uh, perfect weather. Couldn't be better. You look like you're probably drier than most people. I feel okay, yeah. Nice. It is coming down heavy. Big old fat rain. <laughs> that was sideways rain. Stinging rain. Stinging rain. <laughs> when the fang lowers on, sometimes it even comes straight up. <laughs> well, the good news is the rain gear that I have is dry and in my dresser. Oh, good. And I don't have the extra weight of body heat, so I'm, I'm chilling, dude. I'm running really efficient. You have that dumb look on your face. Dude, like it really, like it kind of spooked me a little bit. It was, it was kind of weird just now. I feel like I'm dry right now, but my gear looks like it's soaking. So, uh, we'll see what happens. I just jumped in a swimming pool. I feel warm though. 
I don't feel like I'm wet at all. My gloves are completely drenched. I ditched the gloves. Just going barehanded. The redwoods are beautiful up here though. behind me. I don't see anybody else. We got wet leaves all over the road. Super slick right now. Just chilling in first gear doing about 20 miles an hour. Taking it easy. Toga right now and the sun finally came out a little bit we're gonna try to get some lunch now we're gonna get some uh, burgers impossible burgers you guys get burgers burger. and a burger 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 Mickey burger. impossible burger impossible burger, impossible burger. Oh, I might just do the classic cheeseburger or the French move I don't know. Rain lightened up a little bit. We were gonna go into San Francisco and check out the Golden Gate Bridge, but just everything is slow moving right now because of the weather. So we're thinking we're probably just gonna head back out to the Pacific Coast Highway and go south and head down to Big Sur and not do San Francisco today. You know, sometimes you gotta improvise and make changes based on conditions and what's going on. So that's what we're doing right now. After lunch, we found our way to Highway 17 and headed south on that back into Santa Cruz, at which point we picked back up on Highway 1 and headed south on our way into Big Sur. The rain was still coming down really heavy all the way into Santa Cruz, but once we made our way south a little bit, down past Monterey and past Carmel, the clouds started to thin out a little bit, we got to see a little bit of daylight, and we felt like we were finally starting to get ahead of the storm.
out here on the PCH and this is where it gets starts to get really good. We're just south of Carmel and we're just where it gets really narrow, two lane highway. The scenery is absolutely epic. It's the epitome of California coastal highway riding. I gotta say the weather has been pretty intense. Lots of rain. My feet right now are just sloshing in my shoes. Mickey has a scowl on his face. Rain or shine, baby, let's ride. Good attitude nonetheless. We're just at some random place we pulled out, pulled off alongside the road. A little trail here. I think the sun's coming out a little bit. That's good. It's super windy out here. much more beautiful than this, jeez. <laughs> you guys want to stop at Bigsby Bridge too? Yeah, that's the famous yeah. bridge. Yeah. I've been there like seven years. Yeah, we'll get some pictures over there. A road construction going on, so they got these stoplights, only one lane can go at a time. Started raining again. Everyone's fleeing. Fleeing like cockroaches when the light turns on. But we're here, the ADVs enthusiasts here. It's like everywhere we go, we bring the rain with us. I think yeah. you can the rain dance. It's like, it's dry. Like, oh, cool. Like, you drop. And it's like, we get there and it's like, oh, now it's raining. I think we outran it for a second, but it's caught back up with us. I was dry, cold, wet, and kind of dry again. And I'm just Permanently soggy. Part of the soggy bottom boys. <laughs> it's a cool bridge. Let's go Alright, so we just landed at the Big Sur Lodge. This place is pretty cool. There's not a whole lot of options in Big Sur as far as hotels go. And Big Sur Lodge is right next to the state park and it's kind of got that cool like rustic feel to it. Yeah, the rain let up a little bit right now, but yeah, we're just trying to dry out right now. We're completely soaked. I'm gonna wring out my socks here. Got that two lane life sock. That's what kept me safe today. Oh yeah, wringing out the water. Yeah, my boots are supposed to be waterproof, but they're not. After we all got settled into the Big Sur Lodge, we decided to go out and grab a bite to eat. We went to a restaurant called Nepenthe that's perched up on the side of the cliff, which has one of the most amazing views you'll ever see. The rain picked up again in the evening, so the ride to and from the restaurant was definitely a wet one. Any headway we had made on drying out our gear before dinner was quickly reversed from the ride going to and from Nepenthe. Waking up to a gloomy morning in Big Sur, California. It's not raining right now, which is one of the firsts for this trip. So we're packing all the bikes up right now 
Uh, I think we're gonna head down to the lodge here, the Big Sur Lodge. We're at, I think it's called Pfeiffer National Park. Uh, it's kind of cool, the Big Sur Lodge has a national park here. There's a bunch of different places you can go to and like hike and things like that. Obviously this trip's not about hiking, it's about riding. So we're not gonna partake in any of that stuff. But yeah, we're loading up all the bikes right now and headed down the coast, down Highway 1. Pretty excited, this section's pretty dang nice. I've done it several times, as I think all the guys in this trip have. The storm clouds are headed south, so chances are we're gonna hit a little bit of rain. I've got the Harley Davidson's Adventure Touring, the Passage stuff, Revit makes it. And yesterday, it kept me pretty dang dry, and it's probably the worst rain I've ever ridden in. It was completely just gray out, just dumping on us yesterday. Spikes do well in uh, adverse conditions. Right. Yeah, Pan America was definitely a good choice for this ride. Uh, all the luggage is like, even the the soft bags, like not a drop of water in those. Hard bags, you can pack a lot of stuff in them, obviously, and they're watertight. They're just perfect in the rain. I mean, I they held up a lot better than I did. Even with the rain gear, I still ended up wanting to get off the bike, but the bike was ready to keep you know going. How are you liking this, the soft bag? I like having this one. I, I, it's nice having the tour pack, obviously, is for like a backrest or something. Um, and, you know, being able to lock a full size home is awesome. The soft bag, though, on the other hand, you can just put basically, I, I, I can put my entire backpack in there and I can put stuff on top of that. Um, and so you just get a lot more space out of the soft bag and it's easier to open um, quickly. You don't have to take your keys out of your pocket or anything. You just, you know, unlatch it. Less security, but more storage is kind of the trade off there, um, which I'm willing to take because I'm constantly trying to get my stuff out of my camera bag and that kind of stuff. So uh, if I had to fiddle with the keys, it's like one of the biggest downsides of the Pan Am is that like the hard bags, like you need to have the key. You can't leave them unlocked. You yeah. can never forget them unlocked, but you can never you open them without the key, which is, Means that I only put stuff in here that I only access maybe, you know, every every so often. Every time I stop somewhere, I need to get into my saddlebag. You got to find the keys and open them up. And then to close them, you have to use the key as well, which, whatever, it's not a big deal. But having the, the regular touring saddlebags are a little bit nicer to just get in and out. Of course, Mickey's, we think it's probably because the leather covers on the top of the saddlebag lids. He got a little bit of rain in his saddlebags, which... I don't think that Harley Davidson claims these saddlebags are fully waterproof, but they're usually, you know, 90, 95% uh, waterproof. So, anyways, yeah, we'll see how the day goes. Hopefully, we get less rain than more, but we'll see what happens. Up. Let's take off and loading this bike up here. Good morning, Vietnam. You ready to roll, dude? I am. I'm just a little disappointed that it's not pouring rain right now. I wish it was, but I want to be like soaking wet the whole time. I'm still wet from yesterday. How's your, how's your weather jacket? It worked really well. It worked really good. I got a little damp because it was open, but. The boots, they were compromised. Yeah, my boots are super wet too. But yeah, my boots, they didn't hold up. I had the blow dryer, the hair dryer in them all night pretty much.
Whenever someone asks me for a recommendation on where to stay when they're traveling up the coast of California, I always recommend Big Sur. There's just something rad and magical about this place, the way it's preserved, how little it's built out and commercialized without completely killing the vibe of nature. That and on both sides of it, you have some of the most scenic riding in California. I don't consider myself a world traveler, but I think it's safe to say that this is easily one of the best motorcycle roads in the world. Over the next 30 years, one of my goals is to become a very well-traveled motorcyclist. And I think when I get to that point in my life where I can say I've traveled some of the most beautiful roads in the entire world, Highway 1 is still going to be the top dog. This section of Pacific Coast Highway is especially good. Just south of Big Sur, all the way down to Cambria, you're literally right on the edge of a cliff. You just have nice winding roads, and I would recommend heading south down this road if you have a choice. That way you're right next to the edge of the road and the views are a lot better of the ocean. This road is just laced with amazing bridges, awesome winding roads, beautiful cliff sides with pine trees all over the place. You have the amazing ocean views with, with different rock formations jetting up out of the ocean floor below you. We had a bunch of that coastal fog rolling in over the hills, which made for this moody, picturesque landscape. The other thing about heading south down the PCH is there's a lot of places where you can pull off little dirt areas. This was probably our best stop of the day where just we had like the perfect lighting, the rain had let up a little bit, and we took some amazing pictures and a lot of great drone footage. next stretch of Highway 1 PCH is really what we come for right here. Some amazing views. It's definitely one of my favorites. Highway 1 through this section is also very isolated. There's literally no roads that branch off and go inland. So once you get on the Highway 1, you're pretty much stuck on it for a significant amount of distance. Because of that, you have very little commuter traffic. Most of the people on this road are looking to have a good time and just there for the sights.
you stopped at every amazing scenic overlook on PCH, you could literally take days to travel just 20 miles. this area of Highway 1, there's this man-made tunnel on the side of the cliff. It's pretty iconic and a lot of pictures are taken of it. It only lasts for about six seconds, but there's something about this tunnel that just screams Pacific Coast Highway, and I feel like it's one of the coolest landmarks on this section of the PCH. As we continued to travel down Highway 1, the cliff sides started to flatten out, the roads became a little bit more inland, the scenery got a little bit less green, and what I feel like is the best section had passed. A California Coast Highway trip wouldn't be the same unless we visited the Lion Seals. It wouldn't be a California Coast Highway trip if we didn't stop and check out the elephant seals. So we just parked the bikes, we're gonna go check them out. This is just south of where the Highway 1 gets really cool and really windy where the cliffs are and everything. So we're just south of you know all that good stuff. Uh, probably what I feel like is the best section of PCH. And so we're gonna go check these out right now. The weather is cooperating big time. Uh, yesterday I was having my doubts about the trip, but today's kind of making up for it. We got like 65 degree temperatures, a little bit of overcast, some clouds in the skies, but yeah, overall, dude, the weather is awesome. So today we're really enjoying it. That, that PCH, it never gets old. It's probably my favorite road I've ever ridden.
No matter who you are, you gotta stop at the elephant seals at least for five minutes and check it out. They never disappoint. There's always a bunch of them and they're always doing their thing. From here, we continued down Highway 1 and stopped off in Cambria for a gas up and a little bit of lunch. We continued to shoot down the PCH until we got to about San Luis Obispo, then we picked up the 101. Right around there, Highway 1 gets a little bit more inland. It's not nearly as scenic as the sections that are north of it, plus it slows down considerably, and the 101 is the road that brings you back into Southern California. We had a couple of other memorable stops down by Santa Barbara, where we pulled off to the side of the road, had a little bit of fun with the Pan Americas in the dirt, and played around with the drone a little bit. Pacific Coast Highway will always be one of my favorite roads to ride. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is the road that I claim. PCH represents everything that I love about motorcycles. To me, it's a perfect combination of mountain canyon riding combined with coastal views. The weather is pretty dang good all year round. Even the man-made features like the bridges and the roads are absolutely spectacular. The Pacific Coast Highway is the benchmark for me and is definitely the road upon which all other roads will be judged. And there's definitely one thing that I know for sure, it's best experienced on two wheels.